This is the land of Havilah, Nehemiah 12. The next 26 verses are a list of the most prominent priests and Levites of the returned exiles. It's like the credits rolling at the end of a movie. The list begins with the priest who came in the first wave of returnees under Zerubbabel, who became governor, and Joshua, who became high priest, Haggai 2.2. These priests were there about 95 years before Nehemiah came, verse 1. Now these are the priests and the Levites who went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Malak, Hattush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Iddo, Ginnathoi, Abijah, Mijaman, Maadiah, Bilgah, Shemaiah, and Joarib, Jedeah, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, and Jedeah. These were the chiefs of the priest and of their brothers in the days of Jeshua. Comment again, those were the most notable priests of the first wave. Now for the most notable Levites of that time. The first of them is Jeshua, no relation to the priest Jeshua. Ezra 8, 33. Verse 8, Moreover the Levites, Yeshua, Benui, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, who was over the thanksgiving, he and his brothers, also Bakbukiah and Uno, their brothers, were close to them according to their offices. Comment now moving forward in time, starting with Yeshua the high priest, the notable male line that descended from him, each of them seems to have inherited the high priesthood or was expected to inherit it. Verse 10, Yeshua became the father of Joachim, Joachim became the father of Eliashib, and Eliashib became the father of Joiada, and Joiada became the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan became the father of Jadua. Comment of that line, the ones active in Nehemiah's time were Eliashib the high priest, his son Joiada, and his son Jonathan, Nehemiah 13, 28. Coming up, a list of prominent priests under high priest Joachim. We might say they were in the second generation of the returnees. They were probably passed away by the time Nehemiah arrived. Verse 12. In the days of Joachim were priests, heads of fathers' households, of Sariah, Moriah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshullam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malachi, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Haram, Adna, of Marioth, Helke, of Iddo, Zechariah, of Ginnathon, Meshullam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Minyamin, of Moadiah, Pilte, of Bilga, Shemua, of Shemaiah, Jehonathan, and of Joarib, Madani, of Judea, Uzi, of Saleh, Kaleh, of Amok, Eber, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, of Judea, Nethanel. Comment now regarding the Levites, verse 22. As for the Levites, in the days of Elisha, Joyada, and Johanan, and Jedua, they were recorded the heads of fathers' households, also the priests in the reign of Darius the Persian. The sons of Levi, heads of fathers' households, were written in the book of the Chronicles, even until the days of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. Comment. In other words, the following prominent Levites and priests lived in Nehemiah's era, which began in the days of Eliashib the high priest and continued under three more high priests. Many of them are also recorded in 1 Chronicles 9, 14-44. Verse 24. The chiefs of the Levites, Hashabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brothers close to them, to praise and give thanks, according to the commandment of David, the man of God, watch next to watch, Mataniah and Bakbukiah, Obadiah, Meshullam, Talman, Akab, were gatekeepers keeping the watch of the storehouses of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and in the days of Nehemiah the governor, and of Ezra the priest and scribe. Comment again, those were the most prominent priests and Levites in Nehemiah's and Ezra's time. Now for the dedication of the wall. They finished it six chapters ago. Here's the record of how they recognized Yahweh's role in it when they completed it. Verse 27. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem to keep the dedication with gladness, both with giving thanks and with singing, with cymbals, stringed instruments, and with harps. The sons of the singers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain around Jerusalem and from the villages of the Nedophathites, also from Beth Gilgal, and out of the fields of Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had built themselves villages around Jerusalem. Comment verses 27 to 29, at the dedication there was thanksgiving, vocal music, and instrumental music, all provided by the Levites who lived in Jerusalem or in settlements nearby. Verse 30, the priests and Levites purified themselves, and they purified the people and the gates and the wall. 
Comment, purification was something according to Yahweh's instructions in the book of Leviticus. They made themselves ceremonially clean, in other words. They purified the wall and gates in verse 30. As far as the purification of inanimate objects that might involve sprinkling sacrificial blood, Leviticus 8.15, or the sprinkling of what the text calls water for impurity, Numbers 19, 9 to 19. The water for impurity had the ashes of a sin offering in it and was sprinkled using a hyssop branch, Numbers 19, 17. Coming up, Nehemiah organized the attendees of the dedication into two groups. They walked on top of the wall in opposite directions, making music, giving thanks, blowing trumpets, and celebrating. The groups met up at the temple for more music and thanksgiving and offered sacrifices, verse 31. Then I brought up the princes of Judah on the wall and appointed two great companies who gave thanks and went in procession. One went on the right hand on the wall toward the dung gate, and after them went Hoshea with half the princes of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, and Meshullam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, and some of the priest's sons with trumpets, Zechariah the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachor, the son of Asaph, and his brothers, Shemaiah, Azarel, Milaleh, Gilaleh, Maie, Nethanel, Judah, and Hanani, with the musical instruments of David the man of God, and Ezra the scribe was before them. By the spring gate and straight before them they went up by the stairs of David's city at the ascent of the wall above David's house, even to the water gate eastward. Comment in verses 31 to 37, Nehemiah split the celebrants into two groups. It's not clear, but it seems the first group walked an ark around the eastern half of the city, and the other group, as described in the coming verses, walked an ark around the western half. They met at the temple. While they walked, they gave thanks to Yahweh, made music, and blew trumpets. They walked partly on top of the wall and partly through the city. Ezra was with the first group, and coming up, Nehemiah was with the second group. Verse 38. The other company of those who gave thanks went to meet them, and I after them, with half the people on the wall, above the tower of the furnaces, even to the wide wall, and above the gate of Ephraim, and by the old gate, and by the fish gate, and the tower of Hananel, and the tower of Hameah, even to the sheep gate, and they stood still in the gate of the guard. So the two companies of those who gave thanks in God's house stood, and I and half of the rulers with me. Comment, it seems Nehemiah's western group waited in the gate of the guard for the eastern group to arrive, then they entered the temple as one. Verse 41. And the priest Eliakim, Maaseiah, Menyamin, Micaiah, Elioenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with trumpets, and Maaseiah, Shemaiah, Eleazar, Uzi, Jehohanan, Malkijah, Elam, and Ezer. The singers sang loud with Jezrehiah their overseer. They offered great sacrifices that day and rejoiced, for God had made them rejoice with great joy. And the women and the children also rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even far away. Comment, clearing out the rubble and rebuilding the wall was a huge leap forward in reestablishing dignity. We can see how they would be happy about completing the wall and how their success in building it would make them optimistic about things in general. But in explaining their joy in verse 43, Nehemiah went right to the root of it, which was that, quote, God had made them rejoice, end quote. Now for some appointments over the storehouses of the temple, verse 44. On that day were men appointed over the rooms for the treasures, for the wave offerings, for the first fruits, for the tithes, to gather into them according to the fields of the cities, the portions appointed by the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priest and for the Levites who waited. Comment, this also translated, Judah rejoiced for the priests and Levites who ministered. In other words, instead of resenting the priests and Levites and begrudging the support they were giving them, they were thankful for them, fully supported them, and had to appoint Levites to collect and store all these new tithes that were coming in. Verse 45, they performed the duty of their God and the duty of the purification, and so did the singers and the gatekeepers, according to the commandment of David and of Solomon his son. Comment, the Levites performed their traditional roles as originally assigned by David and Solomon. Verse 46. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there was a chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. All Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah 
gave the portions of the singers and the gatekeepers as every day required, and they set apart that which was for the Levites, and the Levites set apart that which was for the sons of Aaron. Come in the days of Zerubbabel, they faithfully supported the Levites with their tithes, and they resumed doing so in the days of Nehemiah, and in turn the Levites faithfully supported the priest with a tithe of the tithe. Nehemiah 13 is next.